David, first of all, your overall thoughts on the World Cup so far? I think it's been great, to be honest. I think it's uh, been, like you said, real attacking football. I think there's been, obviously, a few surprises throughout the competition. Uh, a few big countries going out early. Um, but I think overall, you know, I've, I've kind of judged it off what I've seen on TV. Uh, and the happiness throughout the fans, throughout the stadium, um, that's obviously outside of the field. Um, I think people have really enjoyed this World Cup. I know previously you said you're sitting on the fence when it comes to the final, but what could decide which way it goes for you? Um, I think a special moment by a special player. Um, and I think that obviously is always the case majority of the time uh, in big games, uh, big moments in games, and it's down to big players. Um, but obviously Germany have got a great team. There's not one particular star throughout their team. They've just got a great team spirit, a great team unit, unit, and they've been together for quite a few years. So, you know, they know how to win games. Um, and obviously with Argentina, they've got some great players. And obviously Lionel, you know, you know a player like that on a, on a stage like this, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's going to be special. What's your gut feel? Um, I mean... I've got history of both countries, so, you know, picking one of them. Um, but, you know, I respect, obviously, the way the Germans have played for so many years. And obviously, I, I, I have a huge amount of respect for Argentina because they're such a great, passionate nation. Um, I mean, I'd have to say Argentina, just because I love, I love Lionel. I love Messi as a player, as a person. You know, I think he's a real humble person with such a great talent. and. You, you see the way he plays, it means something something to him. Um, so, I'm going to say Argentina. What did you make of England's disappointing tournament? Um, it was always going to be tough coming into this tournament because obviously uh, we had a difficult group. Um, I know that can never be an excuse, but obviously it's fact. You know, you come up against Italy, you know, they're always going to be tough in, in a World Cup, even though they didn't qualify, you know, they're still a good team uh, and good players and obviously when you don't get off to a good start in a competition you're always kind of chasing things and you're always under pressure so obviously losing that game was a big thing and then going into a game against Uruguay um, after their loss in their first game uh, they needed to win the game and obviously having Luis Suarez back on you know on great form um, you know it's difficult to stop a player like that with so much passion but you know, at the end of the day it was disappointing, of course, and the players, you know, you could tell with the players, uh, they all felt that. Um, but I think that we've got a group of players that are, are young enough to, to get over a disappointment like this. Um, and I think what Roy's done, you know, he's brought a lot of young players in that are going to be there for a good few years. Um, and I think that's what's come out of this competition. You know, they've obviously had experience of playing in a on a world stage, they've had disappointment, so it's going to hopefully make them hungrier to go and be successful in other tournaments. Um, but obviously, you know, England fans, you know, I've obviously been to a few World Cups and I know how much it means to them. Um, but I think what I will say about obviously the fans is the fact that the way they showed their support for the team in that last game when we all knew that we weren't qualifying. It says something about our fans and the way they support us, and it's really incredible. So do you think it's an exaggeration to say, crisis, we might be struggling to even qualify for tournaments in the future? Um, I wouldn't say it's a crisis, because I do think that we've got good young players coming through, but I think that uh, you know people always will think you know, it is a crisis, because obviously we didn't qualify, but I don't think that we was the worst team in the group. I don't think that we played actually particularly bad uh, I just think that we come up came up against two teams that you know at, at, at certain moments clinical moments they finished us off in terms of Stephen Gerrard's decision he's taking his time out to think about whether or not he wants to continue with England mm -hmm. you always said I'd play play for England whenever they asked me what advice would you give him as a former colleague and friend I mean I, I you know Stevie doesn't need my advice but I think you know, obviously I've been there, you know, uh, obviously I've played for England for quite a few years and, you and know, captained. and captained England. And what goes there. with it. And obviously what goes with that, but it, it's, it's one of the things that I miss, you know, out of my whole career. Obviously I miss playing for Manchester United, I miss playing for Real Madrid, but England's always been my real number one passion. 
um, and playing for England always meant more to me than anything else. Um, so, you know, for me, it's one of the, it's one of the things that I miss about football. You know, it's the it's the thing that I miss playing for England. Um, so, I think it'd be great if Steve continues because I think at the end of the day, you know, obviously it was a disappointing tournament for the for the whole team, and the captain kind of takes the real kind of not brunt of things, but I think as as a captain, you feel a certain responsibility to to lift the team, and Stevie has done that for many years for Liverpool, for England. He's always been a real motivator the way he plays. Uh, and his passion that he shows on the pitch. And for me, I'd love to see Stevie co to, to continue because I think these young players need someone to look up to and I think they need a mentor to actually, you know, someone that's been there and done it. And I think Stevie's a great captain. Um, he has been for, for, for Liverpool, he has been for England, and I'd love to see him continue. And, uh, you know, like I said, he doesn't need my advice, but one thing that I would say is if you can play for England as, as long as you can, then do it. Luis Suarez, do you see parallels between him and Eric Cantona? Flawed genius. Um, all I see is two great players. You know, I know obviously what he did. You know, is inexcusable. You know, with with players, and you know, every time something happens, you know, even with myself, with '98, you know, it was inexcusable. But you know, these things happen. They shouldn't happen. But you know, he's come out. Fair play to him, he's come out, apologised. Uh, he understands that he's a role model and um, I think that's one of the reasons why he's come out so strongly and, and, and said, uh, you know, his apologies that, and it wouldn't happen again. Um, but, you know, Eric was a great player and, and, and you know, a, a legend um, and a player that I always looked up to. Uh, and and w the same with Lewis, you know, for me, you know, I look at his football talent and he's a hell of a talent. Um, and if he goes shame to Barcelona, he's leaving the Premier League. It looks like that's done. If is it's that a done, real shame? it's a it's a shame because you know Liverpool was so close to winning the Championship last year. Um, you know he was a real big part of that. Um, but you know it would be a shame to see him go um, because you never want to see great talent leaving. You know one of the biggest and strongest leagues in the world. But you know he is a great talent um, despite whatever else has happened. And like I said, fair play to him. He's come out. He's apologised. Um, but for me, he's, he's a huge talent. Switching to another league, the MLS, there's a huge assumption that because LeBron James is moving City, it will be damaging to your mm -hmm. bid to get the stadium at the waterfront off the ground. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that? Um, I was just actually asked that question, you know, what effect does LeBron leave in Miami? You know, it doesn't have any effect to, to the franchise, to the fact that we're bringing a team to Miami. Um, when I've been asked, in the past about LeBron's involvement, I've always said, A, he'd be there as a friend. You know, he's, he's always shown his support for the game. He's always shown his support for myself and me bringing a team to Miami. Um, obviously his involvement, you know, was always something that I, I've, I'll always leave up to LeBron. You know, if he wants to be involved, he doesn't have to live in Miami. You know, like I said, he's, he's a fan of football in general. So if he wants to be involved in the, in the franchise thing, great. Um, but it doesn't stop, you know, my visions. It doesn't damage, you know, my visions for the team for Miami. Business as usual. Always.